If you just got an Instant Pot, this is a quick start guide on how to do the most important step, which is the water test. And let's be honest, even if you didn't get it brand new, you've probably had it sitting in a box for a couple months or years maybe. So let's just get started with the most important thing. It's called the water test, and it's to test to make sure that your Instant Pot actually works, can hold pressure, and I like to double it and kind of clean it a little bit at the same time, so I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Today I'm using my Instant Pot Duo Plus, but you can do it in any model of electric pressure cooker, instant pot. And this is, like I said, just to make sure that we have everything in place to make sure that you don't have any fails using real food. You'd rather have that fail out of the way if there are any issues with the instant pot. First of all, after you take it out of the box, remove all the packaging and you put the seal in the lid. That is one of the most important things. People ask me all the time, like, how do I put it in? How do I take it out? So this is the sealing ring and I don't even clean anything before I do this water test. Like you don't need to rinse anything, just do it as it comes out of the box and then we'll clean it later. So this is the ceiling ring and we want to just put it right into the lid by just pushing it under the little ridge. And we need to make sure that this ceiling ring is tight in there. Otherwise there could be a leak and it won't come to pressure. Then you'll want to put the liner into your Instant Pot. Make sure that there's no packaging or any label or stickers inside of the unit. Nothing ever goes directly inside of this Instant Pot. Everything goes inside of here. And I know that may sound silly, but I wouldn't say it unless it's actually an epidemic. So I'm going to put the liner into the Instant Pot. And then to do the water test, I like to do at least one and a half to two cups of water inside the liner because then it gets more pressure, more steam, more heat. And I think it just cleans it out a little bit better and it's a better indication of how well it will work. And like I mentioned before, I like to kind of use this as an opportunity to kind of clean out the lid as well, which I'll show you later. But because of that, I am going to add just a splash of some white vinegar into the water and then you can also add like a splash of dish soap in there as well if you want and that will just kind of like clean the lid and clean the parts and everything but today I'm just going to stick with the vinegar. Now that the lid's on we need to do something very important which a lot of people forget which is to turn the ceiling knob to the ceiling position. On my Instant Pot Duo Plus this lid has an automatic ceiling feature and so this is already default sealed and then there's a little button to open it up. If you have an Instant Pot Duo like I have more of, then you'll have this little knob thing right here. So what you need to do is just turn it to the ceiling position and then it will be ready to go. This ceiling knob does come off and so you can wash inside of it and on the lid as well. Next, press the pressure cook button on the Instant Pot. And if your Instant Pot is a little bit older, it may say manual, but anything made in the last three or four years will say pressure cook. On the Instant Pot Duo Plus, press the pressure cook button and then use the plus button to adjust the time to five minutes. On this model, I don't really like it very much, but you have to press start and then it will say on. And that means that the Instant Pot is preheating and it's warming up. On the Instant Pot duos, either the three, six or eight quart models, you'll press pressure cook. And then again, use the plus or minus buttons to adjust the time to five minutes. And then this one is automatic. So you don't have to press any start button. There's actually not a start button and it will just automatically go to on. And that also means it's warming up. After you press those buttons, it will say on for a couple of minutes as it warms up. Once the Instant Pot comes to pressure, then the display will say five. It will display whatever number you added to the Instant Pot to tell it to start cooking. With this number, it's going to start counting down. So then you'll always know how many minutes are left in the pressure cook. During this time, it's totally normal and expected that the ceiling knob or the little ceiling port on the lid will start to kind of rattle or have a little bit of steam coming out of it. When it comes up to pressure, however, that should all completely stop and there should be no steam leaking out of the Instant Pot anywhere on the lid and it should start counting down. If you wanna know even more about your Instant Pot, I have a full almost 30 minute Instant Pot starter guide to help you get started with everything Instant Pot to understand all the different parts, all the mechanics with easy to understand analogies to help you get it. I also have two Instant Pot cookbooks. My first Instant Pot cookbook is I love my Instant Pot cooking for one. It's 175 recipes, all Instant Pot recipes for single portions. It's so awesome. The next cookbook that we just launched this year, just like a couple months ago, is Enjoy 101 Pressure Cooker Recipes for Everyone. This book contains all of our favorite recipes from my website, TriedTestedAndTrue.com, as well as the exclusive YouTube videos from my channel and some recipes that you can't find in either place. My newest cookbook is ready to order today. I'm including fees, shipping,
shipping. And if you use the code YouTube, you get a special little discount. So for all of my US readers and visitors, I hope you grab that copy of Enjoy. Once the Instant Pot starts counting down, the pin on the lid should be up and it will be secure. That means that the Instant Pot is sealed and it is pressure cooking. During this time, it's really important not to move or adjust your Instant Pot too much because it can dislodge that sealing knob and it can make the pressure come out and it's just, just don't move it. <laughs> Once the pressure cooking is done, the display will say L000. That stands for lapsed time. And if you want a full like analogy, like the full explanation on the Instant Pot display and everything like that, I have a full almost 30 minute Instant Pot 101 guide right here. It is amazing. It is so thorough and it will help you feel so confident using your Instant Pot. But for today's purposes, we're just doing the water test. I just want to show you what to do. So once the Instant Pot is all the way down, it says L000, it will beep to let you know that it is done pressure cooking. At that point, we are going to turn the ceiling knob from the ceiling position to the venting position. And that essentially just lets go of all the pressure in the Instant Pot. Now, if you have children or pets or significant others in the room who are easily startled, I recommend that you warn them because it can be a little startling the first time you do it. On my Instant Pot Duo Plus, I just have this little button that I press into the venting position. And on my Instant Pot Duo, there's this little knob. So you just move it very quickly over to that venting position. When there is a lot of liquid in these pots, I like to release that steam in like short bursts. So that is like a soda bottle that has been shaken up. You wanna just release that pressure and gas very slowly versus just throwing that lid off and stuff going everywhere. Because when you are cooking a lot of food in here and you just put it straight into that venting position, especially like soups, then it can actually start spewing food out of the lid and that can be very dangerous and a little bit scary. So I recommend for lots of liquids doing it in short bursts, but since we only have one or two cups of water in here, we're just going to do a quick release. Now you may be tempted to put a cloth over the Instant Pot like this, like you've seen people do and then turning it. However, that can be a safety concern and I don't want anything getting lodged in there and people getting hurt. So please don't do that. Just kind of be warned what will happen and stay a good distance away if you're nervous, but it's going to be all right. So our Instant Pot right here is almost done. And then as soon as it turns to zero, we'll do a quick release. Woo. See, so I moved it like that and it kind of like sputtered because it dislodged that ceiling knob. So that's why, please don't move your Instant Pot while it's cooking. Now let's let go of the pressure. You can hear that that sound is just kind of slowing down and you can open the lid right there. As soon as that pin drops, you can hear it. You can tell that it is no longer flush with the top of the lid. Now we'll open it up. I always make sure to kind of drip off my lid because all that water is on there into the Instant Pot and not onto the counter. All right, there were no leaks on the outside of the lid, through the ceiling knob, and everything works well. So you're ready to use your Instant Pot. Now I dump out the water, I take the lid, take out the ceiling ring, and I just give everything a good wash with some soap, and then you're ready to use your Instant Pot. So I can't wait to see you back here watching all my other Instant Pot tutorial and recipe videos. I'll put a playlist to my best Instant Pot recipe videos here, a playlist here of all my best Instant Pot accessories and Instant Pot 101. And again, you can pick up my new cookbook on my website, trytestedandtrue.com, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.